with all the people. excited just looking around here. I know. Cool. Do you have your list? I do. You do? Okay. Well, let's get shopping. We're in San Francisco. It's we, true. <laughs> we just, <laughs> I'm here with my good friend, the lovely Jessica. Hey. And uh, we just left from Amoeba with some great stuff. So you got you got a lot more than I, I did. did. One, two, I wasn't three, gonna four, get anything. Five. Well, no, I was, but I not as much. Did. So we're gonna show off what we got. Okay. Um, I think you should start off because you uh, have a lot more than me. Okay, so should, what should I do first? You pick one. Okay, um. Okay, so I don't have. Well, I call it a phonograph. You do? He calls it a turntable. I call it a phonograph because that's like what my mom always called it. So I think it's like an old person thing. I actually did get two albums on vinyl because I don't know why. It was just really like I was feeling nostalgic. And I remember listening to these on vinyl when I was little, and they were really super cheap. They are in the clearance section, so. So I got Carly Simon Hotcakes. Um, yas. I don't know, I just remember, <laughs> it just reminds me of being like a little kid and listening to this on our phonograph. Haven't Got Time for the Pain is the song I remember most, obviously, from this, but um, the whole thing is pretty good. Now I haven't got time for the pain. Then I got on vinyl. It was recently Linda Ronstadt's birthday, and I got this. This is a uh, Hasten Down the Wind. It's a really beautiful album. Crazy down so low. Really good. He's hanging on to half a heart, but he can't have the restless part. So he tells her to hasten down. I also got an LP. I got the replacements, Let It Be. Lately on my videos, I've been purchasing replacements records, and that's just because I've been reading Trouble Boys, their new book. Finally finished it, and I love this record to death. I, after I finished the book, I realized how much this album is so good. It's so good. I was initially gonna get Don't Tell a Soul and All Shook Down, which are notoriously terrible albums, but I was gonna get them to complete the collection, so instead I got this one, and it's it's just awesome, and I'm excited to listen to songs like Unsatisfied, I Will Dare, and Answering Machine on my phonograph. <laughs> Record player! Okay, um, I got, this is The Manic Street Creatures, Everything Must Go. My favorite song on here is A Design for Life. That's how I kind of uh, discovered Manic Street Preachers. But truth be told, I was talking to this guy, he was Irish, he was really cute, and he told me about this band. So I thought I'd go back and actually try listening to the whole album this time. Because <laughs> uh, usually with albums, I will listen to one song over and over and over again, and it'll be hard for me to branch out listen to the whole album. <laughs> I've never heard of these guys. Cool. They're pretty good. 90s. Awesome. We don't talk about love. We only wanna get drunk. And we are not allowed to spend. I think
think these two, they go hand in hand. Um, they're completely different bands, but I'll explain in a minute. So I got Blink-182's new album and Car Seat Headrest's new album. Now the reason why I say these go hand in hand is one, that they're both brand new, like they literally came out I think last week. And then two, these are two albums that my girlfriend and I are gonna bond over. With Blink-182, it's classic pop punk stuff. They got a new guitarist, they got rid of Tom and got Matt Skiba, who was in I think Alkaline Trio. We just bonded over these guys, and so we're gonna sit and listen to this one. And then Car Seat Headrest I got because I kept seeing this album cover pop up on Symbol, and I thought, what is this What is this album? Like, everybody's saying all these like cool things about this band. They're saying it's awesome, never heard of them. And so I finally looked into them and I found out their name. I'm like, okay, cool, whatever. I didn't really think of anything of them. And then my girlfriend goes, have you heard of Car Seat Headrest? And I'm like, I have. And she goes, I kind of like them. So I thought, okay, well, I'll pick up this album and see what the people of Symbol say and we'll both bond and be romantic and gross and listen to both of these guys. So there I was, just another shitbag civilian, afraid of the cops when I was outside, afraid of my friends when I was inside, and I grew tired of the scene. like really into like Scientology now. Yeah, Tom Tom's kind of kind of he's weird. Got, he's gone off the deep end. Gone off the, yeah. Aliens. So on the same uh, line of cute Irish uh, bands and boys, this is uh, Shane McGowan. He was the I wanna say he was the headrunner for the Pogues. The Pogues were a really great band, uh, Streams of Whiskey really popular and I thought I would just listen to one of his um, I don't know if his solo work or I'm sure like you know I could look up look it up on Wikipedia and pretend like I know but I don't <laughs> and uh, I just thought I would ch uh, check it out This is another brand new release. I don't know anything about this band. Um, all I know is my friend Connor said that they're really cool and he described them as kind of punky. Connor does have a pretty good taste in music so I trust his opinion and I mean I like the cover. It's simple and it's not like all fancy as some of the other covers I've seen. It's just like a cheeky little drawing with text so I'm um, looking forward to hearing this one. I'm not really sure what to expect. Could be shit could be amazing, but since it's Connor, I imagine it's going to be pretty cool. It sneaks in, ignore, it stacks up around, it follows, now swallow, you're buying it now. Suffocate, suffocate. Um, if you know me, you know that I'm obsessed with Paul McCartney, but I have literally, like, every work he's ever done, um, available to me right now. So, I found this, uh recording of him actually live at Amoeba in Hollywood and so I thought wouldn't it be a great idea to just get that CD while I'm here at Amoeba. So it looks like that and uh, he has a few, I looked it up what songs were on it and he has some good ones. He has Sea Moon which is like one of my all time favorite Paul McCartney songs. It's so good. I don't know why it always gets stuck in my head. <laughs> So yeah, so I got. Show, show the back. It looks oh. it looks awesome. I'm staring at it. Uh, they're all different. Like it's a crossword puzzle on the back, which look, it has like different like things circled. But they're all different. They all have different things. Are circled. The, those are those the tracks or no? No, they're not. Oh, they're just random words. Yeah, they're oh, just sure. random. And some of them aren't even words. They're just kind of you can see they're just kind of like random letters. <laughs> That's awesome. So yeah, cool. Yes, one I got is a band called Low. This is their album Things We Lost in a Fire. Part of the reason I got this was because of that title. Um, I don't know, it just sounded kind of dark and a little depressing. And that's kind of how this band is, is their old slow core, you know, sad, somber music. But the main reason I got this album is because it was produced by this dude named Steve Albany, who's in a band called Big Black, and he is notorious for producing 
albums by Nirvana and just so many other bands. And so this is one of the many things he's produced. And basically anything Steve Albany was involved with, I just will listen to because I think he's an amazing musician. And also this is off the Cranky label, which in the last Amoeba and Chill, I bought a bunch of stuff off Cranky. So honestly, this record I couldn't go wrong with. Love the band Belly and uh, Tanya Donnelly is the um, lead singer for that band and she went off on and did a bunch of solo work and got well not a lot of popularity but the songs did pretty well and this is her latest collection it's called Swan Song Series and I guess she collabed with other musicians and authors and just did her own three disc compilation of her own stuff I haven't listened to it um, it could be really terrible. How much was this? This was actually $9.99. Oh, wow. This was the most uh, expensive one. The most expensive? That I got. For three discs, it's still a good Yeah, deal. it's still pretty good, and like some of her stuff is hit and miss, some of it's a little too whiny for me, but <laughs> um, hoping that I'll find a few on here that are good. thing I got. This one was actually kind of an impulse buy. So as I sometimes do when I'm at Amoeba is I'm kind of unconsciously listening to whatever they're playing. Sometimes it actually sticks and I'm like, oh wow, what is this? This sounds cool. This happened, this trip, and they happen to be playing a Teenage Fan Club album. I already own one of their albums. It's their most popular, which the name is escaping me right now, but you'll see the cover right here in post. But uh, this is their album, 13, and I don't know, it was like, it just sounded really kind of 90s, little corny emo stuff. It reminded me a little bit of Pedro the Lion, just a little bit more upbeat. I don't know, just something about it sounded really cool, and I just decided I'm gonna buy this. I don't even know, I'm gonna buy it, I like it. So here we have it, Teenage Fan Club, 13. About this? Yes, absolutely. They have anime at Amoeba, like a <laughs> lot of it. They have, uh, yeah, a lot. They have and, a lot of DVDs, believe it or not. Yeah, and um, I checked out the anime and I found Spice and Wolf, which is one of my favorite animes. It's not slice of life, it's not romance, it's not etchy. It's kind of just like a like a historical, but non-historical, because it's not really like real history. But anyway, so this is season two and I couldn't find it even online, season two. And I wonder if it's all Japanese or if it has English dub. I'm not sure. Uh, English and Japanese languages. There so, we go. So there you go. Awesome. So, and I couldn't believe I found it there. It was just a random find, so. It just goes to show you can find anything at Amoeba. Anyway, Spice and Wolf is about Holo the Wise Wolf. It's kind of like a, an old legend, and she meets up with this uh, merchant. And it's, it's really cute. Are you sure it's a good idea for you two to be seen together right now? If I kept her locked in the hotel, people would think I really was using her dead as an excuse to take away her freedom. Yes, well, that's what you're telling me, but I have to wonder, what does the lady say? Tis the huh? truth, good sir. I am bound by the painful chains of an enormous debt. They are far too heavy for me to bear. I shall never escape them in my lifetime. If you could only find it in your heart to unlock them, I would joyously douse myself with buckets of flour. Thank you very much for joining. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Get in my face, why don't you? Okay, bye, internet. Bye. Are we getting bombed? 
I think we're going to die. At least we'll die happy. It's been nice knowing you, everybody.